Today's the big day. We finally have a bunch of new assets coming for City Skylines 2. And that's because the first of eight free region packs is now available for download on Paradox Mods. This first pack takes us on a trip to France, and it brings with it, by my count, 423 new Paris-inspired assets. These assets were created by a team of talented and well-known creators, including Jez, Grunny, Drenable, and Revo. And the pack covers a wide range of asset types, including row homes, medium density housing, low rent housing, mixed use buildings, high density offices, signature buildings, and a wide variety of city service buildings. Now I'll be upfront with you, I absolutely love this asset pack. And I think that anyone who plays City Skylines 2 will want to download it. And I say that whether you're planning on building a Paris inspired build or not. And that's because the assets are a lot more flexible than you might expect. So in this video, I'll show you how to get these assets, where to find them in game, I'll give you a tour of each asset, and finally, I'll implement them into a few locations around Magnolia County to show you they can enhance any build. And there's a lot to check out, so let's just dive right in. To add the France region pack to your game, head to Paradox Mods either in-game or via a web browser and search for French pack by City Skylines Official. Once you find it, adding it's just like adding any mod to your game. You'll just want to add it and select the playset that you want to add it to. And once you do that, it'll immediately start downloading. And I want to point out one thing. This is really, really large. It's three and a half gigabytes. So if space is a consideration, keep that in mind. Another thing I wanted to point out is that if you're a GeForce Now user, you do have the ability to add this into your game. In fact, I have confirmation from Paradox that you can add assets, save games, and maps, provided they don't have any dependencies associated with code mods. At the current time, code mods are still not supported, though it sounds like they're still working on some sort of implementation in the future. And on that front, decals are technically code mods, so don't try to add those either. They won't work. If you load into an existing save, you're very likely going to see that signature buildings begin unlocking right away. And that's because a couple signature buildings unlock at level 5 and 9. So if you're in an advanced save like I am, you're going to have these unlock right away. Now, there are a few different places where you'll find assets from the French pack. First and foremost is underneath zoning. If you click in here, you'll notice that you have a new zoning category, French pack. And if you click on this button right here, you'll narrow down your zoning categories to just the French zoning. There are a couple of options here for you. You have medium density row housing, medium density housing, mixed housing, and low rent housing. There are no new French categories for either commercial zoning or industrial zoning, but there is a new high density offices category underneath offices. Now to add these to your city, you'd add it just like you would any other zoning category, select it and zone it in. In addition, you can find new French buildings underneath signature buildings. You can even narrow it down so that you can see only French pack signature buildings. There are also a variety of French themed city service buildings, and those are available right next to their vanilla counterparts. And you can even sort to them just like you did your zoning categories. Now, just like the vanilla assets, some of them are gated behind the progression milestones in the exact same categories. So for the city hall, I'd have to unlock the city hall node. Now let's take a look at all the assets that we get with this region pack. And this is all 423 of them laid out in their full glory. And I know that this looks very strange, but I've categorized them based on building type and their size. And I'm doing that because I think it'll make it easier to zone. And I'm hoping that this is a good reference for folks. So let's dive in and take a look. But first, let me explain how I organize these. So the north south roads have the type of building that it is. So in this case, it is the medium density row homes. The east-west roads have the number of units deep that the building is. And there are a number of roads that say two units deep because some of the categories have a ton of two unit deep buildings. You're gonna notice that for most of the categories, there are not very many deep buildings and there are a lot of buildings that are between two and four units deep. And the most asset variety will kind of live in that two and three unit deep area. Now for the row homes, you'll see that we've got four different types of assets for the two unit deep buildings, two different types of assets for the three unit deep buildings, and one variety for the four unit deep buildings. There are no five or six unit deep buildings. And you'll also notice that there are three assets here that's also universal, and that's because level one and two assets are the same, level three and four assets are the same, and level five assets are their own thing. Now in terms of asset quality, these are absolutely fantastic. And it's like that across the board with this entire asset pack. And you'll be able to see the French influence throughout every single asset. But one thing that I love about these is that I think that you could probably use them in many other types of builds as well. 
If you were trying to have a New England inspired build, I could see how maybe some of these row homes would fit right in. I could see using some of these row homes like these right here would fit in amazing on a waterfront in a Los Angeles inspired build. The one thing to keep in mind with these assets though, is that you can't use recolor to change the color. I'm not sure why, but they are what they are. They are very attractive anyway, but just know that if you wanna make these colorful, it's not gonna happen. And because they are row homes, they're all one unit wide. Our next category is medium density residential. And a couple of things you'll notice about this. We do have some deeper buildings. So we've got one type of six unit deep building, as well as a couple of types of five unit deep building. But these really skew towards that four and three unit deep buildings. So if you wanna have deeper blocks, you're gonna to wanna to go for this zoning category. You're also gonna notice that there are some row homes mixed in here. And these are kind of gap fillers. So if you zone in a whole block, you're going to see some of these fill in and they completely fit. And that's because they line up well with the buildings that are a bit wider because these look like a number of row homes that have been smashed into one another. So they're pretty unique in that way. I absolutely love that we have some buildings like this one where it looks like two row homes and then a two unit building side by side and it's one asset. So that means that they level together and level up into a larger building that has some of the same characteristics of that base building, but it's a little bit taller, a little bit larger. One thing that's exceptional about these assets is the scaling. You can see that these buildings are mostly four and five stories, and then some of the level five buildings get the six stories, but it feels like true medium density residential. Don't expect to see any of those 12 story buildings popping up. These are a really nice scale. Our next zoning category is actually the same as the previous one. It's medium density residential, but it's the corner buildings. And you'll notice that there are a lot of these. In fact, for the two unit deep buildings, there are 20 different corner variations. So I have a feeling you're gonna to wanna to use these not just with medium density residential, but also if you place some row homes and you want to have a nice corner piece, you can add some of these in. There are also a couple of three unit deep buildings, but nothing four, five, or six units deep. So again, keep this in mind as you're zoning. And across the board, every one of these assets is absolutely outstanding, incredibly beautiful. They get even better looking the more they level up, but the level one assets look outstanding as well. And again, more color, more variation with these assets than we have with the row homes, which I think can make a district feel really special. But again, as you get to those higher levels, they begin to look more uniform, and that's for the corner pieces and for the mid-block pieces. Next up, we have mixed use, and this is an absolutely fascinating category. So obviously there are a number of assets, and truth be told, they look very similar to our previous category. The main difference is that you're gonna see some of these storefronts on the bottoms of the buildings. But I love that, it means that these are gonna blend really well if you put them side by side with either the medium density buildings or the row homes. The other thing that's special is that we actually have some row home style mixed use buildings. So if you have some row homes and you want to throw in a couple of mixed use buildings, you can do that and you'll be able to zone these one unit wide mixed use row homes, which is absolutely exceptional. I love that so much. Now, in terms of asset variety, there are the most four unit deep buildings, but there are two, three and five unit deep buildings as well. And then, of course, we have mixed use corners, and this is the exact same zoning category. I just broke these out because I wanted to point out that all of the corners are two units deep for mixed use. And the main difference here, again, between this and the medium density housing is that you have these nice storefronts that wrap around the buildings. Otherwise, they're completely the same. And there are 12 different storefronts available for the mixed use corners. Next, we have high density offices. And these are very different than the other high density offices in the game. Obviously, these are very short, so it's very Parisian. But I also love that this would fit any city that has height restrictions. Like my city of Madison, for instance, has a 13 story height restriction, effectively anyway. And you'll have a number of office buildings that are in effect high density, but only five or six stories tall. So these feel right at home for me. The really interesting thing about these though is again, we have these one unit wide buildings. So if you wanna sneak this into an area that already has townhomes, you could do that. You could also have a really good mix of uses and have buildings that look very similar to one another, which is absolutely outstanding. All of the buildings feel very similar. The uses are changing, not the form, which I absolutely love. Now, these are just the mid-block pieces, so there's not quite as many of these as there were for the residential buildings, but there's still a decent variety. Now, for the two-unit deep buildings, we've got a few right here. We've got a few three-unit deep buildings, some four-unit deep buildings, and one five-unit deep building. 
I really think it's interesting though how narrow some of these are. These are two units deep and it gives you the appearance of tall buildings, but you could have very narrow blocks, which I think is pretty neat. You could sneak parking behind these or a park, whatever you want. You could have a really interesting block because of these buildings. And then obviously to go along with the mid block office pieces, we also have corners. But the interesting thing here is that we have some three by three buildings to go along with all the two by twos. And to me, these have a stronger corner presence. So if you wanted the building, the block to have a larger corner presence, you could zone it in to have these three by three office pieces. And I just, I really like the way that these all blend together. You could see how you could have a really mixed block and not be able to tell the specific asset type unless you were clicking on the building itself because it would all seem like one really cohesive block. And then our final zone category doesn't really fit with the rest of them. It's low rent housing. And these are absolutely outstanding in my opinion. These are the type of low rent housing that I was hoping to have in the vanilla game. These feel like you could basically put them anywhere and they would blend in. The other nice thing about these is they feel like they could fit in an apartment complex, for instance. They could fit as dormitories on a university campus. There are a variety of places where you could fit these, not just in a Parisian build, but I think any kind of build. These look just like apartment buildings where I live and in every place that I've lived, there have been buildings just like these ones. So I think that there's a lot that you could do with these. Now, these are only larger buildings, so four units deep five units deep and six units deep. So it's very different than the other assets. So keep that in mind. These are also generally wider with the exception of these. These are two units wide and we have three and then we're going all the way to the big dogs right here. These are six by six. And now we get to our city service buildings. And for me, this is where things get really interesting. So this right here is one of our substations. So you could put this in a very urban area in between some row homes and have an underground line and serve a very urban area with power. Next to that, we've got a water tower and it is absolutely stunningly beautiful. Just look at the detail on this. It is a work of art. Absolutely love this so much. Now, one thing I want to point out about this and most of the other assets that are utility buildings is that they're going to slot somewhere in the middle of existing assets. So you'll notice that with this one, this is 20,000 cubic meters of water output. That puts it right in between the small water tower and the vanilla water tower that came with the base game. And in terms of the upkeep costs, these buildings are all over the board. They are not just one for one replicas of the vanilla buildings, which honestly, I really, really like. It means that they're very versatile and they add to the game. They don't just duplicate what we already have. And most of these buildings have upgrades as well. And some of them are not what you'd expect. So for this water tower, it has a filtration system. So you could use this to clean your water and provide water to your citizens, which is kind of wild. It's pretty cool. Now, I was giving this some thought, and I think it could be really helpful to see the vanilla assets side by side with the new French assets for scaling purposes. So you can see that for the substation, for instance, this is quite a bit smaller than the substation that came with the vanilla game. Same thing with this water tower. Moving along to healthcare and death care, we've got a clinic. This is comparable to the clinic that you would get in the vanilla game. This has an upgrade, and most of these upgrades for these buildings are going to occur within the footprint of the building. We've also got a hospital, and I absolutely love this. You could either have the hospital with the gardens in the back, or you could add the extension wing, increase the capacity, and have a 600 patient capacity here. So this is a proper hospital, and to me, this looks like a hospital that I would see basically anywhere. So I love this a ton. And then finally, we have a death care facility as well. This is a crematorium. You can't add on a bunch of capacity to this outside of adding additional crematoriums next to it. The one thing you can add is additional cold storage. So this is what it is, but it is very small. So again, relative to the vanilla buildings, this is the clinic that comes with the vanilla game versus this one, significantly smaller. The hospital footprints are about the same, but the scaling of the French hospital is just so much better in my opinion. To me, it looks so much nicer. I love this one so much. Next, we have our education buildings, and I have a feeling that these are gonna be used quite a bit. So right here, we've got an elementary school, we've got a high school right here, and a college right here. And what's unique about the elementary school and the high school is that they have a ton of capacity. So this elementary school is 1,000 student capacity. That's the exact same as the vanilla elementary school. 
and you can even increase the capacity by adding on this sub building, which adds 250 capacity to this building. But what I think is really special and unique about this is that I could chain a bunch of these together and maybe soak up some of that need in the city without it looking outrageous. So imagine placing two of these side by side and two behind it and then using some of the corner pieces and making one large educational campus. And it won't look out of place. You don't even have to think about it being a school if you don't want to. It'll just eat up some of that capacity. So I have a feeling that everyone is going to use this one. Now, this right here is the high school and the capacity of this one is kind of out of control. 2,500. Compare that to Vanilla High School, which is 800. And you can increase the capacity by 200 by adding on the science labs and the courtyard extension. So this is a very beautiful asset. I have a feeling people are going to love using this one as well. And then finally, we have the college. This is a 1000 capacity building. So it's the exact same as the college that comes with the vanilla game. But in terms of the size, it is just a fraction of it. The only thing that I think is unfortunate about this is that there's no way to take two of these and line them up side by side to make one cohesive building. You have to have this mixed in a block with something else to kind of complete the structure. So keep that in mind when you're building with this one, but it is a fantastic building. And again, there is an extension on this one as well. You want to increase the capacity, add the rooftop leisure area. And next we have our fire stations. And it might look like I've reversed these, but indeed I have not. This right here is our firehouse, and this right here is our fire station. So this one is obviously for an urban context, whereas this one might work better in a small town or a suburban community. And this is the exact same as this building, but the upgrade path is much, much, much deeper. So for this one, there are actually four different upgrades. You can add four additional fire engines here. You can add on a quick response unit. You can also add on a rapid response garage and you could add on a firefighter's dormitory. And all of these are just making this building a lot faster at responding to disasters, which is really cool to see. Now, in terms of our fire station, you're looking at a much smaller building with much more capacity. So there are 120 employees here, which makes this a very expensive building and 10 fire engines. And you can increase that by seven by adding the emergency response annex, and the garage expansion. So a lot of capacity in this little building and it could fit really nicely into one of those mixed use blocks. Now remember, this building is the same as this one. The main difference though is the disaster response unit is not available at this fire station. So keep that in mind. Next, we have our police station. And the story here is very similar to our fire stations. The police station building is actually larger than the headquarters building. And it's basically the same as the police station that came with the vanilla game. In fact, you'll notice that the number of patrol cars is identical. The number of employees is a little bit less. The main difference here is that the jail capacity is 15 higher. The other difference is that the upkeep of this building is significantly higher. In terms of the police headquarters, the main difference here is that you cannot get police helicopters. So if that is something that you are interested in, you can't do it with this facility. You can add to the jail capacity as well as to the number of patrol cars that you have, but you will not get any uh, of the helicopters with this building. Next, that might be my favorite building in the entire set, and that is the French City Hall. This to me looks like a city hall you'd see in any mid to large size city, and it is absolutely wonderful that it is small. It's one thing that I really dislike about the Vanilla City Hall is that it's a gigantic building with tons of parking. This one has just a little bit and it is a much more rational size. This also has the exact same extension wings, the exact same benefit as the Vanilla City Hall. So I will only use the Vanilla City Hall when I have to because this is outstanding. And you can add on the wings. It gives it a very balanced look. It's just a very, very nice asset. And then our final city service building is one that was kind of a surprise to me. We have a French train station and it is an absolutely gorgeous asset. Now, in terms of size, this is very similar to the medium train station that we got a little while back with a game update. The main difference that I've noticed is that the number of employees is considerably higher. So this one right here has two employees. This one has 25. So this is more of a central station for a city than this one in my estimation. And you can add on the extension wings on the side, make it a bit more comfortable, adds a ton more employees, but it has a more grand vibe. I could see for a mid-sized city, this really being the centerpiece of it. 
let's round things out by looking at the five signature buildings that come with this pack as well. The first one is a residential signature building. This one increases well-being within one kilometer. Very nice corner building. We've also got a couple of mixed use buildings. This one right here increases your city attractiveness by 1% and increases well-being within 750 meters. This one increases your well-being by 10 within two and a half kilometers while also giving you that 1% attractiveness bonus. So now that tourism is fixed, if you want to attract tourists, these are some buildings to add to your city, but nothing compares to this one right here. This one increases your city attractiveness by 5%. It also gives you 10% entertainment bonus citywide and increases your well-being by 10 within one kilometer. So this thing is going to massively upgrade your city in terms of its tourism attractiveness if that's something that you want. And this one right here is a cabaret hall. This is the only dedicated commercial building that comes with the asset pack and its signature building. But look at that detail, absolutely stunning. And then finally, we round things out with this office signature building. Increases your office efficiency citywide by 1%, your attractiveness citywide by 1%, and your happiness by five within a kilometer and a half. So very nice corner office building. And I know that we made our way through those very quickly, but hopefully that gave you a pretty good overview of all those assets. So let's move on to implementing a few of them within our city. The first thing I want to add to Magnolia County is going to be something that's bothered me for quite some time. And that is that we've been using the wellness building as the city county building. And I've always wanted to have a city hall, but the building is just way too big that comes with the vanilla game. So I haven't even unlocked it within our progression menu, but we're going to do that now. And I'm going to replace our city county building with a proper city hall that actually gives us the city hall bonuses. We now have that available to us underneath police and administration. And there is our French city hall. And look at the size of this. It is so much smaller. And then we can reestablish our grid right here. And I probably want to rethink this block now that we have this street going all the way through here. And in my opinion, this fits into the city a ton better. I love this building so much. So this also gives us the benefits of the city hall. So we're getting the lower crime rates, the lower import costs. We're also getting the lower interest rates if we were to ever take out a loan. But this, in, in general, the building just looks a ton more grand and a ton more like a city hall in my opinion. And it's not overwhelming in terms of size. We actually opened up quite a bit of space, reestablished the grid, in my opinion, just a much better fit. Next, I want to rethink this entire apartment complex. I've never liked this. I've always had a problem with the way that it turned out. I think the scale is off and it doesn't really meet the vision that I had for the apartment complex. But I think with our low rent residential, we can actually make something that fits a lot better. It's probably half the size of this and even has more people. So let's wipe this whole thing away and then go back to the drawing board. And there we go, we have a completely clean slate. Now, I know that this is relatively level, but along Lake Street, it does kind of dip down. So I'm gonna pull the buildings back a little ways and place these all myself. And for this, I'm gonna use Find It. And if you type in FR, uh, you can actually very easily get to all of the French buildings.
And there we go. Is this the most exciting build? I don't think so, but I think that it turned out beautifully. And this was my original vision for this area. I wanted this sort of an apartment complex. It fulfills a need in the city. It provides a great deal of density and it doesn't look out of place. To me, this is the ideal low rent housing uh, for, the, for the build in general. So I really, really like this. And then lastly, I've cleared this block right here, right along Lakeshore Drive, and I want to redevelop this with some of our new row homes. And I want to be really deliberate with this. So let's go ahead and redevelop the corner, maybe with some of those offices. And then I want some mixed use pieces right here that look like row homes. So I'll just put one right here and one right here. And it's going to be mad at me because the zoning is not facing in the correct orientation. Easy enough to fix. I will just temporarily replace this with a highway. And then right here, I'm going to add in some French medium density and then some row homes right here. And I don't know about you, but I think that this looks absolutely outstanding. But I think that this amount of density along the coast can look really, really nice. And it fits in very, very naturally, in my opinion. So I really love to be able to add stuff like this into my build. And with that, we have the City Skylines French Region Pack. And in general, I absolutely love this. It's free, so it's amazing to get 423 new assets. And even though they're Parisian, there's a variety of different contexts that you can use them in. And I think that they're going to fit into many different types of cities. And some of the assets are going to outright replace some of the vanilla assets, like the city hall. I probably won't use the other city hall unless I have two cities in a region. I think that there is very little to be critical about in this pack, with the exception of one thing. And it's not the fault of the asset creators, but more of the game itself. And that is, Paris is not a very gridded city. I mean, there is a grid pattern, but in many cases, the blocks are irregular. And because of the way that city skyline zoning works, you end up with a very square Paris, which is fine. You can make it work. And if you use the move it mod, you can come up with some really exceptional things, but just know that you are likely going to have a very square or rectangular Paris if you want it to look good. Because if you try to go outside of what I'm doing right here, you're gonna end up with buildings that don't line up. And I don't think that those sides of the buildings that don't have any windows look particularly great. And that's what you're gonna have a lot of if you're not building in a perfect square or a perfect grid. But when you do, it is hard to deny the results. I kind of just randomly threw some of the zoning in here. And while there might be one or two things that I would change, these look pretty darn good for the most part. And when you come into street level, it's hard to deny what a great feeling this gives you. This doesn't feel like any block that we could have created yesterday in City Skylines. It feels outstanding. It feels very walkable. It feels very Parisian, which is outstanding. So I think that this is an absolutely fantastic pack. If you have the space on your hard drive and you're playing City Skylines 2, I think that you should probably get this as soon as you can. And with that, we're going to leave it here. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this one. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care and bye-bye.